What's the matter? What's wrong? What's happening? Uh, it's it's fine. I just have to do a list of the ten worst singles of 2018 because it is it is list week. So yeah, yeah. You did hear the words correctly that came out of my mouth. The ten worst songs of this year that we are currently living in. Assuming you're watching this video in the year that I made it. Although if you're not, please keep watching. It should be no news to you that in 2018 a lot of music did come out and and quite a bit of it was bad. So bad I could quite possibly do a top 50 worst songs of the year, but I'll spare you the, the skull-splitting migraine and j just keep it to a simple, nice, easy, light 10. So uh, without any further <laughs> ado-do, top 10 worst songs, let's go! At number 10, I have placed the collaborative Little Xan and Noah Cyrus song, Live or Die. Live or Die features one of pop music's greatest power couples. Uh, oh, no, oh, oops. But I digress. Live or Die is a nonstop thriller where Lil Xan's creaky rap verses interject in between Noah Cyrus trying to do her best Lana Del Rey impersonation. Quite literally, that's what this song sounds like, just like Noah Cyrus was kind of living on an endless diet of Lana Del Rey. And after a while, she basically decided, hey, I'm famous and have uh, an industry-connected family. I'm just gonna come out with my own Lana Del Rey song with my boyfriend. And yeah, the end results here are about as uninspired, boring, and shallow as one could imagine. The title of this song may be Live or Die, but everyone knew going into it, the stakes were not that high. At number nine on this list, it's Freaky Friday featuring Chris Brown. It's it's a Little Dicky song. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that my opinions on Little Dicky haven't exactly been positive. And yeah, this song pretty much epitomizes everything that I haven't really enjoyed about Little Dicky's music up until this point. The whole song itself is based on a painfully dumb and unfunny premise. Furthermore, the humor he extrapolates out of this premise is horrible, and then on top of all of it, it manages to like just be really tacky and in bad taste. Obviously, the title of the song is in reference to the movie Freaky Friday. So Chris Brown and Little Dicky switch places for a day, I guess. And Little Dicky's like, whoa, amazing, I'm not this guy that like is super awkward and can't get laid. Then Chris Brown is essentially like, yay, I'm not Chris Brown. People aren't looking at me and remembering me for all the horrible things people know me for. I mean, I guess you could say the instrumental and the flows on this thing are packed but why would you ever want to listen to it when the concept is such trash? At number eight on our list, it's the Bad Religion song, The Kids Are Alt-Right. Since the entry of the Trump administration into the White House, there has been no shortage of uh, political songs uh, across the music spectrum. And generally, I, I guess, what's more political than a, a good old punk tune? And you would figure with this incredible wealth of problems in the world at large, like punk music would just be killing it, man. There's no shortage of stuff to bitch about, or really rage against. But unfortunately, this song accounts for one of the more uninspired and tepid rock songs in response to this new rise of the right wing in the current political meta. I mean, not to say I disagree with the politics of the song or anything. I mean, fascism is bad, the alt-right is bad, but this is easily one of the most uninspired and boring responses of punk-flavored dad rock I think a band could have to that. At number seven, it is the 6 9 song, Bebe, featuring Anuel AA. The New York rapper essentially trying his hand at a Latin trap and a Latin pop flavor on this one. The instrumental is offensively generic. 6 9s vocal performance is nasally, auto-tune soaked, and god-awful. Anuel AA's voice just sounds really uh, gargly and like he's just got a mouthful of water that he wants to keep in, in the bottom of his mouth while he sings his, his lines. I mean, I know the song did numbers, it's an incredibly popular track for 6 ix 9 and uh, certainly uh, was a successful transition into uh, the Latin charts, but goddamn is the song obnoxious. Even more obnoxious is the track hitting my number six spot on this one, and that is Pitbull Ocean to Ocean featuring Rhea. Yeah, this track is essentially uh, an original cut for the Aquaman soundtrack that Pitbull saw fit to put together, and for the most part, it's just him like, singing and rapping some really corny bars over a revision or a, a reverse engineered version of the Toto Africa instrumental. The chorus vocals are mixed way higher than the verse vocals. Pitbull going, Whoa! 
is mixed even higher than all of that. The the production and the compression on this thing is, is really blown to shit. It's so friggin' loud. On top of it, it ruins the incredibly fantastic song that Pitbull essentially just uses as an instrumental on this track. There's really nothing appealing about this track outside of the musical elements that already existed in Toto's Africa before the creation of this song. It's just one of those tracks that really makes you feel as a music fan like this is like blatant disrespect to the original and, and to the artistry of the original too. Pitbull literally ruins music, man. At my number five spot, like I said earlier, this year in 2018, there was a lot of crossover between music and politics. And very few artists crossed over harder than Kanye West, which is why at this spot here is the song Ye versus the People. If you would let me recap, earlier this year, Kanye came out once again in support of Donald Trump, which is nothing surprising because he had done so in 2017 at a live event, which caused his fans to kind of turn on him in the moment. Then he disappeared from the public eye for a little bit, citing mental health issues, and everybody just sort of assumed that that whole Trump endorsement thing uh, was was really just a fluke, but no Kanye was real about it. It's the real friggin deal MAGA hat and and Everything needless to say the vast majority of Kanye West's audience and the internet at large did not take to this very well MAGA people and conservative grifters and talking heads and the alt-right were pretty excited about it though And even though much of the time it may seem like Kanye is so engrossed in whatever Kanye feels like doing that he's not paying attention to the signs, anything that's going on outside of himself, that is in fact not the case, because Ye seemed fully aware of the very negative reception that his Trump endorsement was receiving. So, I think in his own weird way, he thought he could kind of explain this whole thing away by essentially making a song with T.I., and it really just ends up sounding like a half-assed piece of trash that doesn't really explain much. <laughs> I mean, not only does it sound like T.I. is performing with a mix of like, I'm actually not happy with you over this, but simultaneously I, I don't really want to be here, but a lot of what Kanye is saying on the track only goes to show how little he sort of understands about the greater political dynamic of, of right now. And on top of it, how much these decisions for him really sort of come down to Kanye West himself and his ego and whatever his gut feeling is and whatever people generally are telling him not to do, which Kanye, it's pretty much his MO to go against the grain at every turn. And even though Kanye West is responsible for a lot of the music that I loved in 2018, I gotta say, Ye versus the People is not an example of that. At number four, I place the Paul McCartney song, Fa You, a track that essentially feels like a fa you to anyone who's ever enjoyed Paul McCartney's music. Paul McCartney saw fit to drop a new full-length album of solo material this year, and all in all, it's not a bad album. At the very least, a cut above many of the records artists have been dropping these days who come from the same era of music that he does. But Fa You was not only a terrible teaser track to this album, but maybe the most low musical point on the record too. As this song is essentially Essentially, Paul McCartney trying his hand at writing a really bad tacky piece of millennial pop complete with the whoa woes, you know, the millennial whoop, and without question the worst lyrics on the entire album. If there's one good thing I can say about this track though is that it will disappear with 2018 entirely. I will most likely never have to listen to it again for the rest of my entire life. Except for when I'm on my deathbed and my brain is just basically shutting down and in the last synapses firing away in my cranium made of vibranium and titanium, uh, the song is playing as uh, my death rattle just sort of calls out into the hospital room. At number three, I want to place the Eminem song, Venom, which is not only the tacked on closing track to his new record Kamikaze, but it's also on the new Venom soundtrack, essentially a music movie promotional tie-in, like we're living in 1990 friggin' nine or something. And yeah, this is easily one of the worst sounding and annoying songs Eminem has released in a long time, and yeah, Revival didn't even come out that long ago. And a lot of that does come down to a crappy beat, a totally obnoxious hook where Eminem sort of layers his voice on top of itself again and again and again where he's delivering in this growly demeanor. Venom! 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 
Meh. Yeah, there are very few songs I would say that this year sounded more displeasurable than this. <laughs> At number two, we have one of the grossest songs in the top 10. It is the R. Kelly track, I Admit, a 19 minute long cut where R. Kelly doesn't really admit anything. Essentially, this song is just R. Kelly singing out every rationalization for the shitty behavior that he's had that's been plastered all over the news media for the past how many years? And honestly, if I had to listen to R. Kelly do that, I would I would much rather listen to an interview or something, not 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 a song. Because again, that just ruins music. It just disgraces music in general. Which, yeah, that might be my reasoning for placing it so high up on this list. Not only is it really annoying and long-winded and totally tedious and unnecessary, but R. Kelly is essentially using the art of music to gaslight his audience into thinking, hey man, well, I, I didn't do anything wrong. Come on, buddy. You know, all this bad stuff happened to me before. And you know what? Sure. I like the ladies. Yeah, this this is horrible. This is cringy. This is friggin' cringy as pho. Pho you. And at the number one spot, the greatest rapper of all time that anybody's ever heard in their lives ever, Tom McDonald with the song, White Boy, White Boy, White Boy. Yeah, the rapper the internet loves to hate. He's pretty much here at my number one spot. It's Tom McDonald. If you guys have no idea who Tom is, I did a video on my Fantano channel where I essentially cringed to this song and the music video attached to it. But if I could summarize this track in a few words, it's basically like white indignance. Tom McDonald taking the fact that maybe some people have had some negative comments about his braids on the internet and they don't like it that he's a white guy and he's rapping. And taking that negative backlash from trolls over social media or people who don't like his music for whatever reason and extrapolating that into white people are under attack. Oh my god. White people are under attack. Mean tweets and articles on Slate.com are not tantamount to slavery and family separations and police brutality and any other problem that people of color or minorities disproportionately face in this country, shut the fuck up. And this whole shtick, this ideological angle is pretty much Tom McDonald's M.O. now, as many of the songs he's released past this track sort of deal into this anti-politically correct And I get that political correctness can very much be a problem, but the right contributes to it just as much as the left. And Tom's whole opinion on it is based on this really skewed and white-centric view. Never mind the song itself is corny as hell, like Tom McDonald's Donald sees himself as this edgy, truth-telling Macklemore. It's like he's the opposite of Macklemore in every way except for skin color and talent level. And yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. Those are my top 10 worst songs of 2018. If you're morbidly curious about any of them, I guess you could find more information on them down in the description box. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Tran. Zishin, have you given any of these songs a listen? Did you love them? Did you hate them? What would you rate them? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? The like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video, another list, another list week video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, 10 worst songs of 2018 forever.